Hi everyone, it's Kim. I just wanted to take some time today to share with you my June 2017 favorites along with an almost full face of first impressions. But before I get started, a couple of things. One is I'm probably going to move through this video quickly because Murphy's Law, my camera battery, will probably die in the middle of it. And also, if you'd like to see more of these videos or hear more from me about makeup, hair care, skin care, lifestyle, or the new blogging adventure that I'm embarking on, I'd really appreciate your support. So please like, subscribe, and share. And without further ado, let's get started. So in June, one of my big focuses has been skincare because it's the beginning of summer, the weather is really fluctuating, at least it is here in the Bay Area where I live, and I already have sensitive and combination skin and eczema on top of that, so I really need to work extra hard to maintain my hydration and try to keep texture to a minimum and just take care of my skin. So aside from the things that we should be doing every day, like you know, drinking enough water, getting enough sleep. Um, in terms of the products that I've been using, I've really been focused on skincare. In the morning, what I've been doing, and this came at the recommendation of a Sephora cast member, is they said, you know, sometimes we can do that, you know, 10-step Korean skincare layering process, which I do love. I do really enjoy when I have the time for it. I feel like it's made a huge difference with my skin, and so I do try to take the time to do that. But one of the things that that cast member actually recommended is with certain products, if you feel like they're not meshing very well together when you're layering them on your skin, it could also be because, you know, molecules are different sizes and so they may not penetrate as much as they should or be giving you the maximum level of benefits. And so he actually recommended combining my facial oil and my moisturizer or my cream to get that full effect or as close to it as possible. I don't think it works with all combinations of products, I will say that, but I feel like it's been working for me at least with these products that I've been using. So in the morning, I've been using the Caudalie Premier Crew, the Elixir. It's a facial oil. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's one of the, I want to say, lighter, um, thinner, if that makes sense, facial oils. So I'll put some on the back of my hand here, and you'll see that it runs down it right away. Um, light fragrance, doesn't irritate my skin, and again, I have sensitive skin. I've been using it on a regular basis, and I really like it. Um, but one thing that I've added to my routine, which is new, and which wasn't necessarily layering as well over my facial oils as I would have liked, is the Tatcha the Water Cream, which is supposed to be a refreshing and anti-aging, pore-perfecting Japanese wild rose um, cream for normal to oily skin. And one of the reasons that I like this, even though I do have combination skin, is during the day I can tend to get greasy, especially in the T-zone. So I've had a history of using those lighter, more gel-like moisturizers. This one comes in a tub like this. Um, and if you can see on top, that's actually a mini spatula that you can use to scoop out the product. And that way it's a little bit more hygienic when you're doing that. Um, it's a really light cream. I'm really enjoying it. It does smell herbal, so if you don't like fragrances like that, this may not be for you. What I've been doing is taking a dollop of that with the spatula, scooping it into the palm of my hand, taking two to three drops of the Caudalie Premier Crew, the Elixir, and mixing that in my hands together, warming them up so they're combined before I put them on my face. I start with the center of my face and spread them outward, and I feel like it does moisturize enough for the day. It doesn't make me too greasy, and I've just been really liking that combination together. So similarly to that, for nighttime, I've been doing the same thing with the Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil from Drunk Elephant, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Um, I like it because it's not supposed to be sensitizing. It is a bit of a thicker oil. So let me show you the bottle here. Hopefully you can make that out. I cannot tell if my camera is focusing. Um, a little bit thicker, so it does still run down my hand, but um, if you've tested it in store, it is a bit of a thicker consistency. I have been mixing that with another line that I've really been loving, which is, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering this name, the Belief, Belief, I used to call it Belief, I've heard people say Belief, um, Pete Miracle Revital Cream. I've really been enjoying their Pete Miracle line. They also have, I wanna say, 
an eye cream and a serum. Um, the serum's consistency is a little bit more, it looks viscous, but it is actually still really light when you put it on. Um, and then the eye cream I just bought, so I'll have to give you a review on that later. But I've been mixing a few drops at night of the Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil from Drunk Elephant with the Belif Peat Miracle Revital Cream. I'll just show you what that looks like. So, uh, of course I got some on my hand. So this is the container right here. Um, premier consistency for nighttime. I feel like that works better for me because I feel like at nighttime I need it to really sink in. So I've been using that and I tell you, even before I go to bed, I mean in the morning I feel like it makes a difference, but even before I go to bed I feel like my skin just looks like it's glowing if that makes sense. Um, Again, this is a little bit of an herbal fragrance. It may not be for you, but I've been really enjoying it and I don't think it's too strong. And I am sensitive to fragrances, so um, if that speaks to any of you out there, I think it's definitely worth a try. Also related to skincare, again, like I said, for the summer months, I'm gonna be talking a lot about skincare, is I feel like my lips get really dry, so every night I have to put something moisturizing on them. I still do use my um, Glam Glow, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but they did have like, uh, they used to have a combination lip scrub with like a lip polish that you would put on afterwards. That still works really well for me, but with a little bit thick consistency, I've also been enjoying the Bite Agave Lip Mask. So really enjoying that. Um, food grade cosmetic products. Very light fragrance. I have the one that I think is just their original or I don't know if it's a vanilla, um, smells good, not too strong. It definitely puts like a thick layer of moisture on your lips. Kind of reminds me of a consistency that I would say is even maybe thicker than Vaseline. Um, but you can control that, so I spread it out as much as I want, and that way the consistency is just right for me. It's really been helping um, in terms of keeping my lips hydrated instead of getting like chapped and cracked like they sometimes do get over the summer. So really been enjoying that. And then on the makeup front, I haven't tried a lot of, is it Glossier or Glossier? See, I'm gonna butcher this. I just, I know I'm gonna butcher this. Um, but I haven't tried a lot of their products. I did recently try the Cloud Paint Seamless Cheek Color in Dusk. Um, so, Here's the little tube it comes in. I really enjoy it. I feel like in the summer months, liquid and cream products tend to work better. I don't usually actually like liquid and cream products, um, but because my skin is combination and sometimes it gets dry in the summer when I'm trying to, you know, put all of the powders on, whether it's highlighter or bronzer or, um, you know, just a setting powder. It can look flaky, it can settle, and I just want to look a little bit more glowy in the summer. So I've been using this, and I don't know if you can see the color. It's just a light wash of color. I feel like it sinks into the skin really naturally. So my battery did not die, but my camera did stop recording automatically. I'm using a Canon EOS Rebel T3i today. If you have any pointers as to how to get it to stop doing that, please leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, so I was saying the cloud paint in dusk, it's supposed to be a seamless cheek color. I think for the summer months, the liquid and the creams really do give me more of that glowy effect that I'm looking for as opposed to looking really dry and matte. Um, I was concerned that it would slip around on my foundation or on my cheeks because again, I do have combination skin and it can get greasy, but I find that Usually when I'm oily, it is in my T-zone, so I'm not as worried about my cheeks, and I do like that extra moisture actually during the day. Um, and it's just a light wash of color, so something else I've been enjoying is that cloud paint from Glossier. Another thing that I've been using on a regular basis, and to avoid getting the kinks in my hair, I have been using the Invisibobble. They look like this when they're out of the packaging. They stretch pretty far, so even if you have a thick head of hair, it should still work for you. I've been using it to tie my hair back during workouts or when my hair is wet and sometimes I just want to put it in a low bun and get it out of my face. It's been really helpful for that. When I was younger, I used to use those like shiny black rubber band looking hair ties. 
Those did not do it for me. They did have a good grip, but they ripped my hair out every single time. So if you're looking for something that's not gonna be painful, that is going to have a grip, and that's not going to rip your hair out or damage it or create kinks in your hair, I've really been enjoying this. It's the Invisibobble again from Sephora. It's made out of that type of like coil, bungee type material. That I will leave a link because I don't know the exact name of this Kate Spade purse, but I just picked this up. I'm trying to have my purse name for work. And normally I would not even be able to afford the outlet version, but my friend is blessed when it comes to outlet shopping. Um, we went to the outlets in Livermore, so the San Francisco premium outlets, and they had a 60% off sale. And on top of that, she had a 30% off certificate. So this purse outlet price was supposed to be like $450 or something like that. Probably something I would never spend, although more power to you if you can. I just can't afford it. It ended up being $129, including tax. So I think it was a total steal. Uh, similarly, this is not a Longchamp. It's an imitation, but I have been using this when I've been traveling, much like the Longchamp Le Pliage bags. I feel like it's just as sturdy um, based on the bags that I've seen in the stores. It's a good neutral color, so I can take it everywhere with me and it'll match pretty much everything. Has a lot of space inside, and it also comes with a little pouch that you can put either cosmetics or anything that you need to get to fairly quickly in here. I got mine on Amazon. If they still have the same one, I will try to link to it down below as well. I want to say it was maybe $35 at the time when I purchased it. So a huge steal. Um, so that is it for my favorites for June. Moving on to my almost full face of first impressions. So I've gotten some new makeup lately, um, some in store, some online. This morning for the first time, I used the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. Surprise, surprise, what everybody's been talking about. Um, so here's the actual palette itself. I don't use the brush that's provided just because I am used to other brushes that I've uh, used in the past that I'm just a little bit more familiar, a little bit more comfortable with. But these are the shades. I know there was a lot of controversy about whether a bunch of the shades were the same as each other, um, what the quality of the pigments and the shadows and the texture of the shadows was like. I think, again, as a lot of people have been saying, that was just a matter of you know, images that weren't fully portraying how the colors come across. And I don't know if you can see it here, but I really do enjoy the shades in this palette. I've bought other Naked palettes before and haven't necessarily reached out to grab for them on a regular basis, but I do think I will be using this one on a regular basis. Just to give you an idea of how some of these swatch, so this is Lumber, that's this fifth shade right here. Scorched is the one that I used in the center of my lid. And Fuego, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. And Ashes is that dark plummy color, so very pigmented. Let me see if I can swatch that on my, I have a bug bite on my arm, so sorry. On my arm for you here. And again, that's just one swipe each, um, and that, those colors really show up. So, you know, there may still be a lot of people out there that think this palette is not for them. Totally understand. Me personally, I love the warm tones, especially right now that it's summer. Um, I heard a lot of mixed reviews on this, but I've also seen more recently a lot of great reviews from people who have taken the time to give it a chance. So. If you are interested, I would recommend the Naked Heat Palette. To the rest of my first impressions. So as a primer, one of the primers that I used today was the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. I used it in store and the reason that I picked it up, it comes in a tub like this, is because I felt like it really minimized the look of texture and pores um, when I tried it on on my hand and on my arm in the store. The texture is a little bit thicker, consistency is kind of like a balm, but it's more emollient. Um, I did put it on my T-zone today and where I have more enlarged pores kind of next to my nose on my cheeks. And I do feel like in some places, like on my cheeks, it worked fairly well. Um, and in others, like on my nose, jury's still out, so I will keep you posted on how I feel about that. 
but so far not bad i did like it more when i tried it in store at first um but we'll see maybe i just have to get used to using it on the other parts of my face i'm sure you've heard of this one the Too faced hangover replenishing face the can't even talk replenishing face primer silicone free kind of uh smells like coconut just slightly because it is supposed to have coconut water in it i got the travel size that comes in a tube like this um just because i wanted to try it out first and just make sure i really enjoyed it before i got a larger size and my regular primer i feel like i've been having surprisingly a lot of luck with it even though i tend to have greasy skin in the summer is the marc jacobs um undercover like coconut primer but thought i'd give this one a try because of all of the other reviews i've been seeing um, when i picked it up at the counter the person there said that they really enjoyed it that they also have combination skin and it worked really well for them i feel like when i put it on today it melted right into my skin again i didn't use it too much in the t-zone because i had been trying the tarte clean slate timeless smoothing primer um, but i do feel like it melted right into my skin in the outer areas of my face where i did try it smelled great feels really comfortable it's not overly tacky it's not overly slippery so i like it so far i'm gonna have to try it on a day when my skin um, is really dry when i wake up to see how much of a difference it makes then today it wasn't too bad because i have been using that new skincare routine and i've been trying to keep my skin a little bit more hydrated so we'll see how that goes um, also use the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation with SPF 15, if I can get this out of the packaging here. Um, I like it because I still feel like it's at least medium coverage. I don't feel like the coverage is too light, but the consistency does feel a little, a little bit lighter, a little bit more watery, hence the name. Um, what I do find though is if I have any other product on my hands, if I've just put on primer and spread it out with my hands, um, or if I have anything else on my fingertips, it does make it a little bit more difficult to dispense this. So as you can see here, cap comes off, you're supposed to shake it well, and then there's this dropper that you depress to kind of, you know, dispense the drops of foundation. The coverage was good. Um, I did use a brush to put it on today. I felt like in the places that I have some dark spots on my skin, I just tapped it a couple extra times on my skin and it covered them pretty well. It does feel breathable. Um, I got the shade in medium tan sand, but I wasn't sure how much I would like it because I don't typically use the sheer types of foundations because I do have skin problems, but I feel like, you know, I'm just gonna make it a goal to take better care of my skin and I really like the way that this applied today. The Kat Von D Translucent Loose Powder. When I tried it on in store, again, the lighting at Sephora is such that it was slightly shimmery, so it is translucent, but I felt like there was a slight shimmer, which probably helps with making your skin appear a little bit more even um, when you set your foundation. The other item that I picked up from Kat Von D, and I wasn't going to do both of them, but the cast member was saying, this one is better for texture while I got the Locket Blotting Powder in Medium. So this right here comes with a little powder puff. And again, it looks lighter, I think, in the actual tin than it does when you apply it to your skin. But the reason that I got this, of course, no big surprise here, have you seen Kathleen Light's video? Um, I haven't actually watched her demo on it, but she mentioned it in a favorites video, and I love her. It is super easy for her to convince me to buy anything. So she said that this was not advertised as a blurring um, or a pore filling powder, and she, um, as you probably know, has skin that's on the drier side, so she was afraid it would be too matte, but it worked really well for her. I, on the other hand, would not mind if it makes my skin a little bit more matte because I do tend to get a little bit oily in the summer. So I thought I would try it and see if it really does blur my pores. So far I like it. Again, I need to try it with some other foundations, with some other bases, so I will keep you posted on this as well. The Dior, um, let's see, Nude Air Luminizer in 001. So this is the nude tone. Um, I saw Claire using this. I think she used one of the pinker shades though, 
and I really like it. I feel like it's a very natural highlight. I did have some trouble uh, when I was using a Wayne Goss brush with it and I don't know if it's because I need to use a different brush or you know if the Wayne Goss brushes they're so soft and I wonder if I need a little bit uh, firmer of a brush to apply this so I'll have to try it with something else. And I was right, and my battery did start to die, so I had to recharge it really quickly. So I really need to speed through the rest of these. Um, other first impressions today, so for the face, I had that Dior um, Luminizer, love it so far. Again, if you're looking for something with some larger chunks of glitter or something a little bit more blingy, maybe for like a night out, might not be the one that you wanna go with, but I was going for a more natural look today. And again, I think you can see it right there. Um, I feel like it has a nice sheen to it. I've also just tried the Becca Luminous Blush in Snapdragon. Not a color I would usually go for. I don't usually go for these bright pops of color when it comes to blushes. I like it because it's that perfect combination for me right between like a pinkish and a peachy color, especially for the summer when I'm trying to match it with like other warm tones or bright tones that I'm wearing on my face. It is small, so it's six grams, definitely smaller than their bronzer, for example. Here. The Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Bronzed Bondi, I hope I'm saying that right. I wasn't sure if this would be too red for my face. I feel like in the tin in the store, um, right now it looks brown, but it did look a little bit like reddish brown when I was trying it before. And I wanted to make sure that it didn't look, and I don't, there you go, so you can see the texture, that it didn't look too orangey on my skin. So I'm lucky in that my skin is already pretty warm toned, but I used it as a bronzer today, um, kind of to contour as well, and that's the reason that I like that it's not too orange, because I can use it to contour if I'd like, um, but it works very well as a bronzer as well, which is what it's meant for and I do plan to continue using this. I would highly recommend this based on my first impression. So the, let's see, Urban Decay Collector's Edition Lipstick. I got the one here um, in abstract, so it comes with his artwork on the outside. This one's kind of like a taupey color. So right there, if you can see it. Um, I feel like sometimes this type of shade is a little too close to my skin tone, but with a little bit of gloss to make it shiny, kind of in the center of the lip, I like it with this look that I have today. It is supposed to be a cream finish. I do feel like it was a little bit hard to um, apply to my lips at first, and that could also be because my lips were not totally moisturized, um, but that's something that I'll continue to take a look at and just see if it's easier to apply on my lips and if it's a little bit more spreadable in the future. So another product that I tried today is the Tardist Double Take Eyeliner in black. One end is a felt tip liner like I'm used to using. And the other end is a pencil liner, so right here. Um, I only tried the pencil side today to tight line my upper lash line um, and then do my lower lash line or lower lid in that water line. So I want to say, you know, it did start to melt away a little bit, which is typical for me, honestly, with any eyeliner that I use, just because I have watery eyes. But I think if I put a little bit of um, dark eyeshadow over it, so put the powder on top of the pencil eyeliner once I've applied it, then I do think it will have a lot more staying power and I'm not too worried about it. So I do like it based on my first impression. And again, that was the Tardis Double Take Eyeliner. And then, in this new formula, the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. It comes in this packaging here. I just got the travel size to try it out. It looks like it has little water droplets on it. Um, I actually also got the travel size because I've heard that sometimes the formulas seem like they work a little bit better in the travel sizes because the, the tubes are smaller and there's less air that can get in. Um, they tend to, you know, not dry out as quickly, last longer, and just work a little bit better. So I just tried this today. I feel like it did give them volume. It did give them length. Um, it's not as highly rated as the non-waterproof version. I'm not totally sure why, but I had to go with this one. My lashes do not stay curled if I don't use a waterproof mascara. So I like this. I feel like 
I bought two because I had a feeling I was going to like it and I feel like I would totally use it again, totally take it to travel with me. You know, there are other mascaras that I feel might look a little bit more lengthening, but I feel like this gave me length as well. But again, the um, emphasis here is on the volume with this product, so I feel like it did its job. If you like the top that I'm wearing today, it is the Current Air Nelly Cold Shoulder, Shoulder Top. This is an extra small. It does tie in the back as well. Um, I got this from Stitch Fix, so if you haven't subscribed to Stitch Fix, it's this great um, styling service. A stylist will put together what they call a fix for you, which comes with five items based on your style preferences, your sizing, things that you'd like to receive. Um, and have delivered directly to your door and then you can return whatever you don't want to keep but if you do keep all of the items there is I want to say a 20 or 25 percent discount on the total um, for the entire fix so I will leave a link down below with uh, my referral code so that you can sign up for that as well as if you like the jewelry that I'm wearing today these are rings from Majory I've really been getting into gold jewelry more and I love their stuff. They do have some collections that are limited edition so I want to say this ring right here might be from I want to say something called the Lines Collection. It's either like a New York or a Stockholm ring um, and they do a lot of collabs with influencers so people get to help them design their products and those are often the limited edition uh, pieces. I've really been enjoying them. I feel like they're dainty. They do have bolder pieces if you're interested. Um, they have necklaces, bracelets as well, and earrings, so I will leave my link for that as well so that you can take a look at the major jewelry. So that was my June 2017 favorites along with my almost full face of first impressions. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will try to get to them. Thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait to make more content for you and hope to see you here again soon. Thanks everyone.